I just want to say good morning to everybody, and we really, really appreciate you coming out and joining us this morning. Um, we thank Ms. Walker for having a wonderful breakfast, and I heard there's like a little brunch food after we finish, so we can have a complete day. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Debbie Vins, and this is my partner, Ann Donovan, and we're the master teachers here at um, the Early Childhood Program. So we also um, work with uh, Fort Dix CDC and Fort Dix Elementary. We have classrooms over there. So today we really wanted to talk a little bit about early literacy, where your children are right now as far as literacy. We're going to look at three areas. We're going to look at reading. We're going to look at alphabet knowledge, which is those letters. You know, those, oh my goodness, are they ever going to write and learn their letters? And we're going to look at writing. I want to see if we can give you some ideas on what to expect, because sometimes we think we you know what to expect, and it's a little different. And we're hopefully going to give you some ideas to take home with you, um, so you can support this at home, all right? Because we do here, we do lots of things, but it has to be a continuum. We want to always, always do that. We're also going to have a great session. We're going to get up and stretch a little bit and take you into another room where you can do some hands-on things and possibly take some things home with you. Later, we'll also look at a back table where you can also get make some naked take things too. So we have only an hour, so we want to get started. I'm going to start by looking at. We're going to talk about identifying ways to reading books and the reasons we want to read, read. read. So, how many of your children like to hear the same book over and over and over again, right? Very, very normal. So let's start with story time. Everybody has story time. Big Red Barn. Oh, by the Big Red Barn in the Great Green Field, there was a pig pig, and he was learning to squeal. And on every barn in a weather vane, there was a weather vane, of course, and a golden flying horse. And there was a big pile of hay, and a little pile of hay, and the children, that's where they liked to play. Oh, the sheep and the donkey and the geese and the goats were making funny... Hold on a second. Just one minute. Just one minute. Just one minute. Just one minute. Tracy is there. Oh, no. Oh, anyway. And an old scarecrow was learning on his hoe, and a field mouse was born in a field of corn, yeah. Okay, where are we? Crocodile do. In the barn there was a rooster and a pigeon too, and a big white hen standing on one leg. And under there was a quiet egg, and yeah. Um, and then they played all day, and then it became night, and then they all said good night, sound asleep. Good night. Okay, I read the story, right? The big red barn. Yeah. Look at this big red barn. Have you ever seen this anywhere before? This is the front of the book. It's going to tell us. What do you think the story is going to be about? Animals. Animals, right? There's animals here, right? <coughs> do you know what any of these animals are? Yeah. Hmm, what do you see? Yeah, you see some ducks and chicken. This is my favorite, a cat. And there's little baby cats. Do you know what those are called? Kittens. Kittens, right. What do you think is going to happen? Let's see. The Big Red Barn. That's the title of the book. And these words are names. Those are the people who wrote the story. Her name is Margaret Weiss Brown. She's called an author. Authors write books. And the pictures, I love the pictures, <coughs> are pictures by Felicia Vaughn. She drew all the pictures for this book. Can't wait to see. By the big red barn in the great green field. Oh, it is green. That's a field. On a farm, there's areas called fields. There was a pink pig. So we're learning to squeal. There was a great big horse and a very little horse too. Do you see them? Look at this with his mom. Does anybody know what a baby horse is called? Oh, right, they have different names. And on every barn is a weather vane, of course, a golden flying horse. This is called a weather vane. A long time. 
time ago, farmers would use this to predict the weather. There was a big pile of hay and a little pile of hay, and that is where the children play. Hmm, do you see any children yet? Hmm, wonder if that's going to happen. But in this story, the children are away. Only the animals are here today. So where are the children? They're away today. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So, which story did you enjoy most? Right. Tell me why. Give me some reasons why you like the second one better. There's more detail and excitement. More detail and excitement. Right. Interactive. It was interactive. Full attention. Sorry? Child had his full attention. You had the someone's full attention, right? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. The first one, and I used my, we're all uh, guilty, including me. You know, we don't want to miss the world, and the phones are always there, right? But when we're reading with children, we want it to be interactive. We want it to be interesting. We want children to be able to touch and feel a book, right? And as families, you can do that. You can snuggle up. It's a wonderful time to spend with your child, just to shut out the world for a little bit and to spend some time. All the things we talked about, right? Predicting in this when I read the second time. We talked about vocabulary. The number one indicator of reading success is one of the top things is vocabulary. Children need lots and lots and lots of words. Even more than we think letters, it's really important, which it is, to identify letters. But vocabulary really is a huge indicator. Because we want our young students to become readers, right? Isn't that a goal for every family yeah. member, every parent, uh, grandparent, aunts, uncles? You want children, we want our society to become full of knowledge, and reading is the way to go. So when you think about reading a story, you have to keep all those things in mind. It should be enjoyable and interactive. What's another great way to get your children to read? Who should be reading at home? Everybody. And it can be a book. It can be a magazine. Read everything. When you take to the grocery store, read the boxes. When you're home, read a recipe. Read, 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 everything. We've come a long way. We don't, you know, we're using computers a lot now. In the old days, you used to get letters and you would read them, right? But any opportunity you have to model reading for your children, because they're going to see that it's important. It's a way to get points across. So we did. We wanted to talk about pictures or the illustrations. Make sure you use those words. Use those bigger words, because they'll become familiar with them, and they will begin to use them. We want to listen to their ideas about the story. We want to make connections between the stories in real life. Do you know, maybe we can go and visit a farm. Or remember the time we were at the zoo? Did we see any of these animals? Make those connections. We want to start uh, developing a deeper understanding, comprehension. Comprehension is so important. You have to understand what you're reading. So you have to do it slowly and make it so interesting that they're going to be engaged. Uh, we want to make sure we talk a little bit of vocabulary. We need to know that print means something. It's giving you an idea. It's conveying a message, right? It's OK to say the big, we want to get you, get it, remember, young children Especially babies this way. They don't even know that this is a cover. This is a bag. You open a book this way. You go this way. It's okay to use your finger and do those. And we want to get them to read sometimes to you. Because everyone said, your children want the same story over and over. It's like, I read Goodnight Moon one more time. But have them next time say, you know what? I know you really know the story and they can look at this book and the illustrations and read to you and have that connection. Talk about the things you see, and we talked about making those connections. When should we start reading to children? 
right away. Burke, you can read simple stories and talk to them with those. They have wonderful books. Even this, just looking at pictures and getting them engaged and putting them in their hands. Where should we read to children? Everywhere. Okay? Think about it. Um, I love these. You know, these were like at the dollar store. Prepare them ahead of time. Stick them in your trunk. Put a couple books in there. So, and I know, so instead of when you work at the doctor's office, instead of having children, I mean, technology is wonderful, but instead of playing on phones, pull out a book. Read a book, okay? When you're at the grocery store, it's like, oh, man, it's like the line is long. Pull out a book, give them a book, and have it available for you to read. Um, the new uh, Academy of Pediatrics just put out a study about technology, and although it's wonderful, it is minimal. They are really, really encouraging parents to cut off of the iPads and the phones and everything else. But they are super encouraging in reading, in reading books, okay? Um, what kinds of things do your children like to, you know, what's their interest? Somebody tell me. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Right? What's another thing? Airplanes. Airplanes. Right? Princesses. Princesses. <laughs> Absolutely. We hear all these things at school, too. So look for those types of books. Right? So if your child is interested in dinosaurs, there's fiction. There's nonfiction. Give them a variety. Right? Fiction, nonfiction. And if you have like the mystery book, make it like, you know, you're going someplace and you have, I have, I used to have a mystery, like a secret bag. And my daughter's 23, she still remembers the pink bag. Because it has to change up and it'd be like, what's in the pink bag, you know? So today, you know, I found a really neat, neat book about dinosaurs. And granted, you don't have to go to Barnes and Nobles, right? We have um, a wonderful media center. We're going to encourage you to join the book club here. We have Scholastic. I'm sure a lot of people have Scholastic. Um, they get it here, plus we have some flyers here. You can get books very inexpensively. Gifts, ask for books, for gifts. Because if you have a love of books and you're reading books and magazines, your children will also, okay? So we want to encourage reading, reading, reading. Jan? Good morning. So the next Part that we're going to talk about. Let's see. Do you know this song? A B C D E F G H I J K. And our favorite letter, elemental P. Uh, many of our children think that that's all one letter because it doesn't have the meaning for them. So when we think about introducing letters to our young children, it is important. Um, and also the sounds that are connected with letters but it has to be meaningful to them. How do we introduce them to letters so that it's meaningful to them? So I'm just gonna show you a couple of things. Does anyone here speak um, or read or write Russian? In Russian, I, I don't either. But we have a couple of things to take a look at. Sometimes as parents really interested in getting our children to learn their alphabet, we think that if we buy some alphabet flashcards that that's really going to help. So if we take this, let's see. All right. Does anyone know what this letter is? D. Say that. D. Say it again. Okay. All right. We know that one. All right. This is E. Kraken. Can you say that? <laughs> e crop K. All right, we got that one. All right, we know two letters now. All right, je, je, je. Okay. All right. Do you remember this one? What is it? All right, we got another one. Okay. All right, we're getting our letters down with flashcards now. Can you read? Can you read a word? Right? It's hard to put, think of how much you need to put together when you're, you're taking letters, they're isolated, they all have individual sounds. How many of our letters have multiple sounds? Think about vowels. Sometimes when we start the alphabet, let's start at the very beginning, we want to start with A. How many different sounds does A have? A long A, a short A, a schwa A, an R controlled A. You got the A in the cat and the A in Amy and 
baby A and father. It's difficult. Um, also, the positioning of letters. If children are also learning their shapes, this, this is a cube. If I turn it around, what is it now? Square. Still a cube. You see, or even if you had a flat two-dimensional surface, it would be a square. All right, what is it now? All right, but if you think of, I didn't bring one, but think of an M, and then you turn it upside down, is it still an M? No, now it's a W. So they also have to take into consideration, think of a lowercase b. If it goes the other way, is it still a lowercase b and make the same sound? No, so there's that whole aspect of directionality that has to be taken into consideration as well. So we need to start with letters in a way that's meaningful for children, um, that is going to help them if we start out that way. All right? Did learning isolated letters with flashcards make you feel confident that you could write in that language? No. All right, so they learn about letters through fun activities and meaningful experiences that build on their interests. What are the most meaningful letters to children, do you think? Which ones really have the most meaning to them? Their own names. All right, that's very often where we start with children because that's something when they get a letter in the mail from grandma or when they're writing their, at school, they're writing their name on their picture so they know which picture to take home at the end of the day. They're finding their own cubby. At school, we use letter links. You may have seen those. They're, the letters in their own name and the names of the people in their families are the letters that they're most comfortable with because they have meaning. None of this makes any sense to them unless it has personal meaning for them. So we want to start with letters that, uh, that they recognize. Children sometimes, depending on where you shop, if you shop at the Acme, they start, may start to recognize the letter A. If you go to Wawa, how many of your children from the time they were in the, you know, in the back seat of the car, they're like, oh, there's Wawa. They, they start to recognize things that have personal meaning to them, and they recognize that visually. So we want to keep that in mind when we're doing some um, letter recognition. And then also they want to communicate. All right, sometimes they start out, they may not be forming the letters, but they're like writing you a note. Do you ever have when they have paper and yes. pencil and they're writing something down? They have to start to make that connection that what they write down means something. And you have to develop that um, idea behind reading and writing to move forward. So writing letters, writing notes. Some of you put little notes in their lunch boxes, just very simple things. I love you, so, you know, or have a nice day, or write love mommy. Sometimes they start to recognize your names as well, grandparents. So we want to give them opportunities to see things that are meaningful to them. When you're reading the book, just like Debbie was reading you that book. You could talk about some of the letters on the, this is the front cover. You know, this is the big red bar. Oh, there's an R. Rob, your name's Robert. It's, this, it's your letter. The same letter that's in your name is on the, in the title of this book. So making those connections. At school, we have alphabet materials everywhere in all areas of the classroom. We have, um, three-dimensional letters, we have alphabet puzzles, we have alphabet cookie cutters, we have all kinds of prints all over the classroom. And without spending a lot of money, there are opportunities for you to have some letters in your home as well. And we give them some um, opportunities all day to do activities, and in a couple minutes, we're gonna try a couple that you can do very inexpensively at home as well. So, here are just some ideas for really simple things that you can do. Riding in the car or walking in the neighborhood, point out letters and words on signs. All right, we have exit signs. How many places do you go that has an exit sign in multiple places? So instead of just walking out, talk about the letters and they start to make the connection. When these letters are in this order, that always means that that's the place that we can go out and they'll start to recognize. When you're taking a walk around the neighborhood, think of all the street signs. 
If you see, if you have a silver car, there's another silver car parked right next to you. We need to check the license plate because our license plate is the one that has a J and a Z. Well, is that one ours? How can you tell? Oh, that one has an M, so that one's not ours. So they start to recognize things that have meaning for them. When you go grocery shopping as well, um, if maybe you're sending them over to a shop, oh, we're going to get this cereal with a C on it. All right, the Cheerios is the one with the big C on the front. Do you see it? Do you see the letter? So you can start to point out the opportunities are there. You're doing all those things every day anyway. It's just taking it that one step further to point out the letters. Menus as well. Anything else? Now that you're thinking in this way, is there anything else that you're thinking of as an opportunity to point out letters to your children? When you start to think in that mindset, you'll start to notice letters around you. Think about when you use a public restroom. How do you know which one to go into? All right, there's a sign there that lets you know. Sometimes you're walking down a hallway in a public building. It says caution. Or it says wet floor. How can we tell? Look at what letters are there and what does that tell us? So there are opportunities. When you sort of have that awareness, you start to look at what letters are available to talk about. So we're going to get a little stretch. We're going to go into the other room and we have some displays of some very simple letter activities that you can do at home with your children. Sometimes you'll get a paper that's full of scribbles and they'll go, 
And you'll say, oh, what is this? And they'll say, this says, on Thursday, I'm going to go to the zoo with my class, and da, da, da. And it's just because that's the whole idea. They know that if you put something on paper and it has a form, it's going to be um, writing. And we're mainly going to always accept. We're not going to, we want to make it enjoyable. We want to support them. We don't want to stress them out by like, mm -hmm, that's not the way you do it. Right. That's not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. Wrong. No, that doesn't say that. Encourage. You're going to accept all forms of writing. It's okay. I promise. It's okay, okay to accept all forms of writing. Um, so we want to have these things during, this is in the classroom. We do a lot of signing. We have sign-in sheets, right? We have notepads everywhere because we're going to encourage children to write. Um, when you're, you can encourage your children to do the same at home. You want to just keep giving those th ideas, things like that. So, let's see. Let's look at this, the big word, developmental. Learning to walk is developmental. Learning talking is developmental. I asked all of these uh, families here today, and everyone would tell me probably their child learned to walk maybe slightly different. It is a developmental process. Writing is a developmental process because you have to have muscle development. All right, so you've probably heard gross motors, running, large muscles, right? Jumping, hopping, that's gross motor. That's our large muscles. Writing is fine motor. Means these tiny little muscles in your hands and in your wrists and right here and in your fingers have to be developed before you can write. You can put a pencil in somebody's hand a thousand times a day and if those muscles aren't developed, they're not going to be able to manipulate and hold the tool, all right? So we need to get those things, um, we need to know that it's a developmental process. How do we develop those muscles? You used something in the other room that was perfect. Play-Doh is an excellent way. The squeezing and see what the moving of the fingers, pinching things, that's why they call it a pincher grip. Um, taking little objects and putting them into things, any of those things help develop those fine muscles. Small toys, lacing things, beads, those are all going to help with that fine. So if your child is still struggling to even hold that pencil, stop. Go back and start working on those types of skills. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. They like to imitate, so they need to see you writing, right? We do a lot of this, right? We need to start picking up pencils in front of them. Make some lists. See them writing, see you writing a list. Have them make lists, right? We want to do all those things to encourage the children because they <coughs> love being like you. So we know it's a developmental process. And before they can understand all those letter names and conventions of French, they know that it has a meaning. So a lot of times it will start out here, right? Simple illustrations, you get, and it starts to develop. Then you get this, what they call the scribble writing. Like all those things that could fill up paper, tons and tons of paper. Then we start to see these letter-like forms. They're not really conventional letters, but they're letter-like forms. Think of the vocabulary when children are learning to write a form of a letter. Start at top, top. Down, over, straight line. Pointing out straight, what is, what's a straight line? Curvy lines, right? R's have a curve. You have to go in, so when you're thinking of like, start at the top, make a straight line down, go up to the top again, come around a curve, put it in, and now come this way, a diagonal. My goodness, that is a lot. So you have to think about, that's why it's challenging. That's why you have to get all that vocabulary and have lots and lots of experience. It's not that easy. For us, it's easy. We have lots and lots of experience. We heard a story one time, if I may, that a child who was told to start writing at the, on the top of the paper and the teacher meant for it to go this way. They're like, 
go. I guess this is the bottom of it. Just their understanding, they flip the paper over rather than moving their pencil up here. Just their understanding of that part of the vocabulary can add. It's very complicated. <laughs> Another common practice, writing practice, they'll start, they'll make one letter and they'll cover the page. They'll start at the top and then they'll work down and they fill up the whole pages. You might see something like that. The next thing that usually happens, they start to make these letter-like forms. Are they going to be perfect? Absolutely not. Are you going to encourage? Yes. You wrote a letter. That one looks like a U. That looks like an L because they're going to start experiencing, experimenting with. Okay, now I've got this idea of I can form these curves and these straight lines, and I see these things, and someone's showing me how to do it, and they're I'm going to imitate them. You're going to model, 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 all right? And then they're going to make it backward, upside down. They might even do mirror images, which is really crazy. I don't even know how they do that. That's like, we can't do that if we try. But that's all common practice. Do not get alarmed. If they're doing it in third or fourth grade, maybe we'll be alarmed, but not now. We just want them to have the experience. We want it to be pleasurable. We want it to be fun and interesting. And we want it to, we want to recognize it as successful. Okay, what I want you to do is, there's a pencil on, I want you to take on the back of one of your handouts. And I want you to flip over to a clean side of the paper. I want you to put the pencil or pen in your non-dominant, the opposite hand. If you're right-handed, put it in your left hand. And if you're left-handed, put it in your right hand. And I want you to write your first name. You have to think about it, huh? <laughs> Write your first name. Okay, your non-dominant hand. I want you to try now to write your last name. How did it go? <laughs> a little challenging, huh? Why do you think it was like that? You don't use that hand. What's wrong with the muscles in this hand? They're weak. They're weak. They're not developed. What did you have to think about when you were writing your name? Which way to go? Which way to go? Very slowly. Right. Very slowly, you had to think about where to start even. Then you have to think in your head, like, what does that letter look like? How can I make it, <laughs> yeah. right? So now think about it. We're adults, so our bodies are more developed than young children. So just imagine a young three-year-old picking up a pencil or a marker and trying to get that all together. Gives you a little different perspective, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we were talking about some more things that we said Play-Doh is a wonderful thing. Feed stringing. Fun thing, throw a bunch of, when your children are having a bath, throw a bunch of small sponges in there. Squeezing sponges, they love to squeeze sponges. And in fact, they, uh, the motion of the squeezing. Uh, wash up anything that they can squeeze. The small object using those pinchers. Old fashioned in the car, get them to do, remember the old where is thumpkin? Look at how, look how how we're moving our fingers, right? Where is something? Where is something? Here. Just anything to get those fingers moving to develop the muscles. Even things like large pieces of paper. That's why we easel paint in preschool. Large muscles first, then go into your smaller muscles. Hanging on bars, it once again gives the development of those small muscles in your fingers. Any other ideas? Do you have anything in your homes that you think that might help with developing Legos. fine motor skills? The Legos. Legos, the small ones, yeah, any kind of Legos, right. The picking up and putting them on. Anything else? You know somebody who was, um, sometimes they had a piggy bank and parents would give them some coins, just picking them up in their finger holding them and putting them in a slot, something like that even. Anything you could think of. 
but just you have to be mindful of it because we really want to make sure that happens. <coughs> ice cube trays, mm -hmm. um, something with small compartments that you can put things in mm -hmm. and take things out. Right. Either using their fingers or using uh, small tongs that you might have. Works on that. And right. even just crawling on the ground and developing the wrist, wrist as well. For very young children is very important. If you don't have ice cube trays, egg cartons. Can't go wrong with an egg carton, right? Egg cartons um, are also great for compartment. All right, so what about holding their hand, hand over hand? The best way to teach children to write letters and to form letters is by showing them. Oh, look at how I'm going to start here, and then I go up and there, and if they watch it over and over. Exceptional forms of writing. This gets to so where they are not going to want to do it, because first of all, it looks like you're assuming they're doing it wrong, right? And it really doesn't give them the flow and the motion. So just, oh, this is the way mom writes it. This is the way I write it. I start doing this. And just having them work with them and doing it is probably much better and it's going to encourage them to keep writing than to stop them from writing. So, And we're going to accept all child's writing, okay? It's kind of like that drill and kill. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that with the letters. We don't want to do it with writing. So what I want you just to do is brainstorm a couple ideas, since we have smaller groups here of how you can um, engage in purposeful writing at home. Just one or two ideas. Just think about it. <clears throat> Mention it to each other. We're going to just sort of just call it out if you can think of. How can you get your child, what can you do at home to get your child to do some more writing? What did they do today? I'm sorry? Draw a picture. Draw a picture of what you did at school today. Right. Mm -hmm. I paint. Okay, you so paint. I had my kids paint with me. Painting. And great painting is also great for increasing your muscles and because you're holding a brush, right? We're pinching a brush, they're holding a brush. Absolutely. So painting. Draw a picture of what you did today. And write down what you did today. I don't know how to read. Just write down anything. How would you write down? And see what they come up. Because if you get some scribbles, oh, so tell me now. So just encouraging that. Writing, it, writing letters. Writing letters. Writing a note. Or writing a letter. Absolutely, writing a letter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Writing letters is a fun thing to do. How about our reminder notes? Tomorrow, can I have this for lunch? We'll write it down. Sticky notes. Children love sticky notes. Oh boy, do they love sticky notes. Have a little pad of sticky notes. Oh, okay, you want a banana for lunch tomorrow? I'm going to forget. Write it on a sticky note and put it on the fridge. Write it on a sticky note and put it on the fridge. When he's upset, how do you draw a sad face? Mm -hmm. Because we have the we have the magnetic thing that mm -hmm. you can just draw and then erase it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, like, how do you feel right now? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm upset. <laughs> how mm -hmm. do you how do you draw upset? So, right. Exactly. And you can then model and write. You, he, and they can watch you do that, and that's modeling letter. So there's all these little things that we probably can easily do, but you just have to be once again mindful and start thinking about. It. All right. So, what kinds of things do you have at home? And is there a space that you can have? What kinds of things can you have at home to encourage writing? Chalk. Chalk? Mm-hmm. Sidewalk chalk's great, right? Yes. All right. What else? I'm sorry, I didn't hear Easels. Easels. Yeah, you have easels because you're a painter. Mm-hmm. I have a few dry erase boards and different sizes. Dry erase boards? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Crayons? Absolutely. I have a workspace set up for him. So you have a his, workspace? His size table. Yeah, that's a fun thing to do spaces. too. So then that way he's mm -hmm. comfortable writing versus mm -hmm. sitting on right. the table. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So if you have a little space or just clear it off or just, you know, I'm going to write my grocery list now. Here's some materials for you. You can write a grocery list too because you might know some things I always forget, you know, at the store what to buy. So making sure that that's important, trying to find those materials. I want to show you a couple things. Um, you know, we're a small group, so why don't we come up and stand up. We have some writing things here. <coughs> Since we're a small mm -hmm. group, I think it would be easier to do. To encourage writing. Very simple. If you don't have a lot of space in your home, right? You have a, somebody said they have a writing actual table or a little desk. This is a writing box. It's an empty shoe box. That's all it is. Of course, you always want, we always like children to decorate. It becomes theirs. But collecting little things that you can put into it. We said interest. Somebody loved ponies, believe it or not. We've got to be 23 year old, this used to be some of her things. <coughs> ponies love ponies. Oh, who doesn't love a fuzzy case to write into, right? Pencils with names on them. Funky pens and pencils. Who wouldn't want to use that? Even if they're making scribbles, because it's just fun to use. It's encouraging writing. It also has envelopes. Children are fascinated with envelopes, index cards. Do you ever get those donation? You know, they send you the free cards right. in the mail. Mm -hmm. Cards, right? All kinds of materials. Very simple. You can even close this up and take it out if you need to go somewhere. You have to go to a restaurant. You have to go to a friend's house. You have to go to a relative's house. You can take this right along. Put it in the bag with the book, right? And take it with them. Very simple. Um, journaling. Have something... I have materials here. You can grab some and put together a little journal for your children. Clips. We have um, some eye rings here. It's just a hard cover. Have them decorate, and it's their own personal little journal or pad. Who doesn't love stickers, right? Dollar store. Just very a fine simple. Motor, fine motor. Fine motor. Just peeling them off is great. And these are all kinds of things. Um, baseball, football. Everybody can write. Um, shape books. These are a little bit more fun sometimes than mm -hmm. just writing on plain paper. So we have some templates if you want to trace one out and take it home um, and then just you know cut them out, staple them together, and you have shape books. It's so interesting, the littlest things will interest children right. just by changing it up a tiny bit. Favorite words, right? Ball. You love to play ball. Let's make favorite word ring, right? And you can add, I put some um, index cards, so you can just leave it. And Or Wawa, you love Wawa. Look at the letters of Wawa, right? So you put some little stickers or a picture. You know, right now we have great, so we can access everything with our cell phones, take pictures, and have your favorite words. They love when things belong to them, mm -hmm. right? Agree? So these are really inexpensive ideas. I'm hoping you can, um, you know, look at them and maybe just make a couple and take them home so you can start today, right? Because mm -hmm. we want to do this every day, right? We want to read, we want to write, we want to talk about letters every single day, mm -hmm. all right? So um, I really, I know we are running out of time and I see this delicious salad just arrived, yum. So we want to get you Maybe grab some food. There's a small feedback food, um, form in your folders. And I hope, is there any questions? We have any questions with anything? I have a question about mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. So I can't figure out if my, hand, or if my son is left-handed or right-handed. Mm -hmm. Because he'll write with left, or right hand sometimes, write with left hand sometimes. Mm -hmm. He eats with his left hand. Mm -hmm. He, I think, throws a ball with his left hand. So like he uses both. Mm -hmm. So it's so like I'm trying to encourage him to write, but I don't know exactly which one he does better with because he kind of does the same. Right. So he hasn't figured out his hand dominance. Yet. Right. 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 And that usually I think they say around four. It's pretty much how old is he? He's four. <laughs> he's turning. He just turned yeah, four. Around four. four, like around this age, he'll start to figure it out. Um, okay. Does he prefer one over the other? No. I mean. He's so like, at this point, I would just say whatever, like. Whatever one he yeah. wants to do that day. Yep. There you go. Mm -hmm. Whatever he grabs, and he will. It will become more comfortable okay. one over the other. Agreed? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we just put things in the middle to see, and sometimes it's 
they're starting to show a dominance, but sometimes when they're really, really busy, their hand gets tired right. and they'll just switch it. So we tend to put things just in the middle mm -hmm. and see where they prefer well, to go. When to do it. Okay. And it will, it will usually then become okay. um, more clear, okay? Anything else? We are always here, so if you ever have any questions or anything, just, just give us a ring and uh, we would love to, glad to help you need more ideas or things like that, okay? So thank you so much for your attention and your time. I know we're busy people, so maybe grab some food, fill out your feedback forms, look at any of these, take some um, materials with you, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you're welcome. You.